most prominently at this bright green line, which shows the overall amount of Bitcoin held by any wallets with 10 or more BTC in them. And as you can see, they haven't slowed down a bit in terms of their accumulation. And for wow. those kind of hoping that the, the whales are going to continue to uh, lead the way, this is an encouraging sign that they aren't going anywhere. In fact, they've really just bought a lot of the small traders' bags as they've sold off. Welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Edward, and I have Brian from Santiment, and we're, of course, going to talk about all the important crypto metrics. Brian, uh, welcome in. Great to be here, Tony. Obviously, it's uh, <clears throat> been a bit of a, a concerning time in crypto, and I think a lot of people are looking for signals to uh, be hopeful again, and we're going to do our best to navigate how many of those bullish signals are out there while still trying to be realists about the situation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important for us to leave our emotions at the door and look at metrics uh, to be better informed investors and educated investors. So let's start with Bitcoin because Bitcoin moves the market. It is obviously down. It's below 60K. And folks are very curious, you know, are whales buying? And also, you know, do we have further downside possibly? Yeah, I'll share my screen here. We've got plenty of metrics that kind of answer that question uh, or at least lead people to make more informed decisions when it comes to whether this dip is finally the one to buy or uh, whether we should wait a little bit longer, right? And I always like to kick things off by looking at the past week or so of, of data here. And we see, you know, no surprise here, the vast majority of assets are down. Uh, we can even add on the overall uh, market cap here and see that overall crypto is down across the board about 10.6%, while volume is actually up 30.2%, which is actually somewhat of a good thing. It means that uh, this dip, unlike some of the previous ones, uh, is finally grabbing traders' attention and they are making moves, whether it's to buy the dip or sell off the rest of their bags in fear of losing any more than they already have. Um, and meanwhile, social volume is also up significantly with Bitcoin seeing a 22.4 increase in overall mentions just across social media on Twitter slash X, Reddit, Telegram, 4chan, and Bitcoin talk. And it's kind of a mixed bag. You'll notice Ethereum is actually <clears throat> down over the past week, but if we toggle it, you'll notice that in the past 24 hours, it's up significantly. And we can talk about that more later, Tony, with all of the ETF madness and uh, excitement going on around that subject. But outside of a few anomalies, you know, Bonk is up a little bit. <clears throat> Notcoin is the big winner among the top 100 market cap assets up 20%. Celestia is having a big day. And even Zebu, which is a new entry into the top 100. But Outside of those, it's it's pretty much universally down, and uh, we've seen a mild rebound in the past day or two, but we'll look into whether that's been enough to kind of change the crowd's gloom and doom perspective that they've had. Yeah, and one other metric um, maybe we could take a look at is the Bitcoin supply and exchange on exchanges. Because that could be a signal as to maybe if there's more selling or it looks like the sell pressure is pretty much done. Yeah, let's check it out here. I'll just add it to the first chart really quick and we'll highlight it. Um, I'll take off volume. I'll just take off all of these here so we can look at it by itself. So supply and exchanges is um, significantly reducing over time, which is a very good thing, especially when prices are falling. Uh, oftentimes... When prices drop, that's when you see a lot of coins moving back onto exchanges as uh, that would imply that there's future sell-offs potentially around the corner. Without mm. coins moving to exchanges, it's pretty hard for the continued sell-off to be too significant because that's essentially the only way that you see notable coins be, be moved away is through going on exchanges and then and then subsequently sold. So... You can see here we're down to about 923,000 Bitcoin 
uh, on exchanges compared to say just about maybe five and a half months ago, I believe if I'm doing the math right, January 28th, 1.27 million. So that's a drop of about 27 and a half percent of the supply in a little mm. under six months here. Uh, I, I'd say that's a pretty strong sign uh, that, you know, the, the remaining damage can be limited due to lack of sell-off opportunities. Yeah, great point. And I'm hoping, and I think many people are hoping that this is near, uh, the, this pullback and corrective move is pretty much near to, we're near the bottom and we start some sort of reversal soon. Do you have any data from a whale perspective, what they may be doing? Uh, I know that par part of it is the ETFs and the inflows they've been seeing. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite charts that I try to check on on a daily basis. And here we're looking most prominently at this bright green line, which shows the overall amount of Bitcoin held by any wallets with 10 or more BTC in them. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, they haven't slowed down a bit in terms of their accumulation. And for wow. those kind of hoping that the, the whales are going to continue to uh, lead the way, this is an encouraging sign that they aren't going anywhere. In fact, they've really just bought a lot of the small traders bags as they've sold off. So wow. we look just about a month uh, to what, two and a half months ago, I should say, April 25th, they were holding uh, 16.13 million. Now they're up to 16.17 million. Uh, more granularly, they've added about, about 42,000 to Bitcoin during that time or about a 0.26% increase. That's just fine. And it's not always going in this direction either. So if we go back in time, <clears throat> especially two years ago, and we get rid of the axis restrictions, I'll just take these off. You can make custom axes, everything under the sun on sentiment. So I always, to zoom in, it's easier to kind of look at that way from a short-term perspective, but on a long-term one, you can see they really sold off significantly right around that FTX collapse in early November. And they were kind of flat throughout this period of time, even when uh, Bitcoin was kind of scratching and clawing its way back and then kind of had a little bit of a retrace. And then right around here, late September, that's when they got busy, uh, roughly not at what, uh, 10 months ago now. Um, that's when we really started to see just major climbing and accumulation, a little bit of a flat period at the end of the year. Who knows what that was about? Maybe taxes, something along those lines. But come mm -hmm. January 1st, they just took it to another level. And since just the beginning of the year, they've added on a, a collective 173,840 Bitcoin during that wow. time. So I, I'd call that a pretty strong sign that, uh, Despite the volatility, the the whales are not running for the hills at all. And this is why it's so important to look at data because you look at the Bitcoin fear and greed. X. You you look at social media, retail scared. People are like, oh no, bull market's over. Right. It's it's uh, the end of the world. But the data is telling a very different story. The supply in the exchanges is near the bottom or very low. Uh, and then you look at the whales; they are accumulating and. Mm -hmm. It's so funny, right? I, I guess it's what Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy, right? Um, doing exactly. the contrarian move. So th that's why I love looking at data like this because your, your emotions looking at the price will tell you something different uh, versus the actual uh, metrics. That's really well said, Tony. Yeah, the, the, we've constantly said on all of our content that the markets typically move the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation and the vast majority of the crowd are not whales, right? The whales yeah. are a very small minority, not uh, a very high percentage of Bitcoin wallets hold, uh, you know, even 10 Bitcoin, which would be the equivalent of right now about $570,000 mm -hmm. um, or more, right? So that's what this green line is representing. That's uh, far less than 1%, I think far less than even like 0.2% of all Bitcoin wallets out there. Um, mm. And to contrast this line, by the way, and, and briefly I'll show that Tether and USD coin still leaves a bit to be desired. That's why I have these here because these are shark and whale wallets uh, mm. that hold between 100 grand to $10 million. And 
we'd love to see these lines move up. Um, but that's a little less important than the bright green line. This is what we look at the most. So if we look at the 10 plus BTC line versus the total amount of holders, which is essentially the amount of non-empty wallets. Uh, this is mostly comprised, as you'd imagine, by tiny wallets. Every wallet that has more than zero BTC in them makes up this line. And right now, there's a total of 54.03 million BTC wallets. However, right now, it's actually moving in reverse, meaning a lot of those tiny addresses are getting liquidated and mm. simultaneously, what do you know? They're moving down while the whale wallets are adding to their Bitcoin. That's not mm. a coincidence. There's uh, a lot of times where there's an inverse relationship. We saw something very similar here right when that accumulation period started in late September, look at how the total amount of holders or essentially the tiny wallets were just jumping off a cliff. They were getting tired of this period where Bitcoin was still hovering below 30K, was kind of flirting with 25 to 29K around here. And people were getting impatient and just saying, all right, I'm gonna invest in something else. Crypto's boring now. And so they start to liquidate and whales and sharks just start to eat up all mm -hmm. of those loose Bitcoin. And uh, you see what it did to the price with the eventual March 14th ish, I believe, all time high that we saw. Yeah, man, the data tells an incredible story, but it's one, I think, as old as time, right? Smart money versus, unfortunately, the term dumb money. <laughs> yeah, emotional money, right? Emotional. The impatient and the fearful. So, yeah, wow. it's uh, we're actually most in most periods during crypto, we're rooting for the total amount of holders to move down, assuming, you know, it's going to these wallets instead. So right mm -hmm. now, as long as they continue to drop off as, you know, the $17 wallets out there, not to offend anyone, if that's your amount, every every dollar or amount of Bitcoin matters. But the small ones, as they liquidate, it's generally a good sign because the sharks and whales are just getting richer and they're the ones who pump up the prices for the indefinite future. Mm. Now, let's talk about Ethereum. There's uh, talks from the analysts at Bloomberg and many folks that the approval of the Ethereum spot ETFs is happening this month. We don't know the exact date. The mm -hmm. S1s were submitted yesterday, the amendments. Um, what inf data are you seeing around Ethereum as far as accumulation, social signals, and so forth? Yeah, one thing uh, I like to look at for all assets, and Bitcoin, by the way, looks pretty similar, um, would be the MVRV. I'm going to zoom in just a tiny bit. This stands for market value to realized value. Um, mm -hmm. In other words, you're looking at the average trading returns of uh, different periods of time. In this case, I like to look at a short period of time. So the average returns of any wallet that's been active in the past 30 days versus the average returns for any wealth that's been active in the past 365 days. Mm. And what we see with the 30 day is it's in negative territory, which you should be rooting for if you want to buy or hold or add on to your portfolios. Uh, when you're buying into other people's pain, uh, it's generally a good time or a less risky time, right? Because mm. we deal with probabilities here, nothing's a certainty. Uh, and you have a higher chance than average of seeing your portfolios grow while it's in negative territory. So it's at negative 7.9%, uh, which is not quite in like a historic zone. Anytime it gets to about, let's say, negative 15 is what we like to kind of arbitrarily pinpoint. That's where you really see these as the prime opportunities to buy. You see that it happened just a few days ago on July 5th. And again, uh, on July 7th, and when they dipped below this line, what do you know? Prices immediately bounced both times. So if you want to get that precise and time when MVRV is super low, great. Uh, but either way, anything below 0%, you're in a less risky time than usual. Just over the, over, like, uh, I guess Ethereum found, was founded in 2015. So you're in a less risky time than the nine-year stretch in which uh, Ethereum has existed. Wow. And then on the other end, the long term still is 
up, uh, or, or I should say average trader returns are still above water. Um, mm -hmm. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but ideally we want to see periods of time when both the long-term and short-term returns are below water here, below the zero axis. Then you've got a historically good time to get into Ethereum and breathe easy knowing you're doing it at a smart time compared to uh, history. Mm. Well, I guess my decision to buy the dip yesterday, not financial advice, I bought some salon and ETH, added to my yeah. portfolio in the down, you know, in this pullback was a good decision. <laughs> not financial advice, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least on the, the shorter term end, right? Like you could see um, in the next couple weeks, a little, a little bit of uh, profit on that buy. But I would still warn that we'd like to see this long term MVRV fall below zero. Otherwise, we're still kind of risky on the long term and not too risky on the short term. So it's really a matter of perspective and what your trading strategy is. Yeah, I'm more of a dollar cost average, sell mm -hmm. the euphoric blow off top. I'm not really doing any leverage trading or weekly, monthly type thing. So I'm looking towards like 2025, maybe we're, we're near the peak and right. taking profit there. Yeah, um, DCA is always a tried and true method. Uh, and I know you wanted to talk about the ETFs as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I had this chart up, which is interesting. It, it's kind of just showing the overall mentions of Ethereum versus Solana over time. Um, I know that the ETFs really started to gain some traction yesterday. Um, and that's why you see this, this little growth in mentions of ETH, right? Uh, I guess right now, I should say, but especially when it was first announced yesterday. We can also look at the social trends, trending coins dashboard, and it mm. clearly shows Ethereum as the top trending coin in crypto right now. Mm. And it doesn't just mean Ethereum is being talked about more than these smaller assets like Celestia and Buck. It means based on the normal amount of Ethereum discussion over time, it's still way above average due to the, all this ETF pipe going on. So clearly the crowd is quite excited about it and mm -hmm. interested and we have ai summaries that kind of explain why every token is trending and sure enough it's all about the etfs um and the crowd kind of gearing up with the anticipation of, of them being approved for lots of different institutions like fidelity van Eck, franklin 21 shares grayscale and blackrock who knows if all of them get approved uh, I would presume it's either all or none. I don't think the SEC really plays favorites, but, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Mm. And then there was news, of course, over the past week of Solana ETFs being in, uh, filed, excuse me, um, not the same amount of uh, folks applying for the Ethereum spot ETF. But nevertheless, it's funny that this is starting to pick up some steam. I, I don't know if it's too early to see data around this, but anything you could share there. Yeah, I'm just going to see if there's any specific rises in Solana ETF mentions. Yeah, it looks like it has picked up a little bit. Uh, it's mm. certainly not getting the same traction as Ethereum at the moment. Mm. Uh, this was when it first got announced back in late June, uh, which is still relatively recent. This was just a couple weeks ago. But right. uh, since that time, I... I get the impression that the Ethereum ETFs are just completely overshadowing it at the moment. So oh, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if Solana's ETFs have their time in the sun, but right now it's kind of a, a swept under the rug subject. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. Um, now I want to talk a bit about meme coins and the reason being all coins have been bleeding with, with Bitcoin, right? Um, but meme coins we know have kind of been their own thing <laughs> this cycle. It's crazy the amount of liquidity and uh, has been entering some of these coins and they've been popping off. Um, from an average standpoint, what are you seeing on that front? Yeah, obviously they've been pretty hammered. Uh, the speculative assets out there, which of course meme coins are uh, a prime example of, they tend to get crushed when uh, Bitcoin retraces more than anything else. Mm. And obviously, many of us remember how much of a heater they were on at the, the first quarter of the year, especially. So what goes up must come down and eventually what goes down must come up. Right. So uh, there could be some prime candidates for big breakouts 
if and when Bitcoin starts to recover towards 60 or exceeds 60K. Uh, but as of now, it looks like, you know, prices are down across the board outside of a little bit of a rise from Bonk and Venu chain making a plus 20% run over the past week. Uh, social volume wise, not a lot of interest in them at the moment, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Sometimes those that are under the radar can be the most uh, prominent kind of diamonds in the rough. Shiba mm -hmm. Inu was one that had a, a big run a few days ago uh, toward the, uh, I think it was like over the weekend actually, when it just took off uh, before retracing after Bitcoin couldn't really hold its uh, support level. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it doesn't look like there's anything really standing out at the moment. I would just keep an eye on the ones that are getting the biggest social volume at any given time. And uh, we can kind of check out just the overall mentions. Uh, we could do it a couple ways. We could type in meme coin or meme coins and just see how much social interest the crowd has overall. And not surprising, you know, as Bitcoin and all of crypto retraces, that's when meme coin mentions go down. We can also do specific looks and go like Bonk uh, or Doge or I don't know what's another one, uh, Shiba, we'll just call it Shib, um, Pepe, Pepe, you know, just a few of those you can look at and you can either look at them combined or do it this way and go Bonk, Shib, Doge, Pepe and have them all kind of together to see when their high points are right like pepe had it right before this big retrace the local top that happened on may 28th others had their time in the sun a little bit earlier you can put them on a shared axis too i know it's very noisy but you can zoom in even look at just the last 24 hours and we can see actually that shiba inu is currently having a, a little bit of a discussion run it could be related to the price uh, mm -hmm. going on a bit of a run, I can change the price to Shiba Inu. It, it isn't doing anything special. So that actually could be a signal, uh, not investment advice, but Shiba Inu is suddenly being talked about uh, at a high frequency on social media, despite nothing special happening with the price. That's often a sign of a mini decoupling forming. Mm -hmm. Great insight. Yeah. And that's important because we've seen some of these meme coins go on their own individual runs, even though the rest of the market is not really doing anything. So uh, that's that's great insight. Yeah, you'll often see these pump the most after any sort of mini Bitcoin run, or of course, a major Bitcoin run. Uh, but after Bitcoin kind of goes on its run and then starts to flatten out, that's where you'll most noticeably start to see Bitcoin's profits getting redistributed into more speculative assets. And uh, the popular choice for 2024 has been to put them into meme coins. Mm -hmm. So watch for how specific trading crowds uh, start talking about different meme coins. If you have a favorite, just enter it into the social dashboard and you can find some pretty cool stuff. Mm. Brian, always great information and insights. And hopefully when we meet in the next two weeks, the market is reversing. It's it's starting to move upwards again. <laughs> yeah, we're crossing our fingers. I think we're all kind of getting restless with almost a four month retrace now since that mid, -mar mid March all time high. So um, hopefully some better news next time. But we can at least say as of now, there is a higher probability of some upward movement uh, than usual uh, over the next couple of weeks until we meet again. Mm. Um, everyone, check out Santiment. Link will be in the description. Uh, Brian, thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Always a pleasure.